Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out always the radio, and ladies and gentlemen, I was wrong. I was completely and utterly wrong. I made a very bullish prediction, which was completely wrong, and I'm so delighted to be wrong. You see, I showed you my prediction for the Pokemon Presents a couple of days ago, and I told you I was absolutely convinced we would not see a Gen 9 reveal on Pokemon Day. I told you it wasn't happening. I laid out all of my reasons and I said, look, I know we're on a three-year cycle. I know we get a new game every three years. I know Sword and Shield was released three years ago and this would make sense, but there's no way we're getting it this time. And I was wrong, ladies and gentlemen. I was so wrong and I am more than happy, delighted even, to sit here right now and tell you I was wrong because there's a new generation of Pokemon coming. There is a new game coming and it looks absolutely flat out over the top, amazing. And if you really want to keep pointing out how wrong I am, I'm totally fine with that. I am delighted to be wrong because of the whole, there's a new Pokemon game coming, and I am loving it. Although, it's Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. I should probably say that. For colorblind people like myself, it's Pokemon Red and Blue. Like, if you're colorblind like I am, this is basically just Pokemon Red and Blue all over again. And I don't really care, ladies and gentlemen. I am cool with it. So what do we know? Well, we know that it's an open world. A number of towns and there's some nature spread seamlessly without boundaries. I'm recording before the English site has gone live, so I'm using a Google Translated Japanese site, but that will be fine. You can see Pokemon in the sky, in the sea, in the forest, in the city, and everywhere in the world. It is an open world Pokemon game. A proper open world Pokemon game. And when Legends Arceus came out last month, there was a lot of complaints from people, and I understand why that the world was a little bit empty. Now, I kind of liked it. It seemed right for the world they were going for. It was based as running around and catching and battling Pokemon, which seemed fine to me. But I know there were some complaints about the emptiness of the world. That is not the case here, ladies and gentlemen. There is clearly one of the things they showed in the trailer was this big kind of castle city thing. And you can see there's a building up in the mountains over there. So we've clearly got this kind of open worldly thing. But hey, there's a town you can wander in. Now, one question I have. These Swablu that are clearly kind of hanging around on the bunting in the middle of this city. Can I catch the Swablu? I don't think we have an answer to that yet. Can I catch the Swablu in the middle of the city? Because I really want to run around in the city catching a Swablu. That would make me very, very happy indeed. And they showed off a bunch of Pokemon from Legends Arceus. Including Hisuian Zoroark. Who is an actual new Pokemon that came around in Legends Arceus. So those new Pokemon are absolutely on the table. But then they showed a bunch of stuff like Stone Journer was weirdly front and center. Got a lot of play. I'm not entirely sure why Stone Journer. But look, there's a desert and there's Stone Journer. And I love this. This makes me... I quite like Stone Journer. He's a cool Pokemon. But they showed it and it looks like a proper world. You see this big... Now, this gives me proper Alola vibes, this one. But you've got this house that you're running up to, and it's all perfectly manicured gardens, and the washing's out. And it's clearly right there, right next to the sea. But then you've got things like, well, the vista I showed you a moment ago, which clearly got lots of forest. And then you've got those mountains that are clearly snowy that you can see in the back as well. You've got cities. You've got a real diversity of environment here, which makes me very, very happy indeed. Now, we do have a release date. The release date is the end of 2022. Somewhere in late 2022. Unfortunately, we've not been given an exact release date. But we're quite far out at this stage, I think is fair to say. It is a little bit early for us to actually be getting a proper release date. But I'm going to be honest with you, they might give the release date as late 2022. Incidentally, it does say releasing worldwide. So I think it is absolutely fair to assume we're going to get a synchronized world release. Just like we have for the last few games. We'll see his tip of the day and I'll show you how to do this in more detail later on. But... If it works like Legends Arceus, we're going to be in a situation where if you go and pick it up 
from the Australian eShop, you're going to be able to play it on Thursday afternoon. But it's going to be November, right? The big releases are always in November. I know Legends Arceus was January, but I am convinced that was supposed to be the November game last year. But then again, when that got delayed, and I'm, I don't know for a fact it got delayed, but come on, it clearly got delayed. We just had Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl kind of step in to take the mantle as the November games. The reason, if anybody's wondering, and it doesn't work like this in Japan, but certainly in uh, US, Europe, etc., you have to release big things in November so you catch the two big shopping days for Christmas. It's got to be done. So unless it gets delayed, it is going to be a November release. I feel absolutely certain about that. There have been some questions about, is this actually Gen 9? Yes, it's got to be. They haven't actually said it, but firstly, it's Pokemon Violet and Pokemon Scarlet, which sound like new Gen games, not spin-offs. And also, we've got a new region, and we've got new first partner Pokemon. Now, we'll look at the Pokemon in a minute. I have strong feelings about these, but the region is not... It's not instantly recognisable. So when we looked at, for instance, black and white, that was obviously the US. That was obviously a US-themed game. When we looked at Alola Gen 7, it could not be more obviously Hawaii. And as soon as we saw the Gala region, everything vaguely British was represented that was obviously based around Britain. This is less obvious. It is not immediately apparent where this region is based. My best guess at the moment is it seems kind of European. Spain, Italy, somewhere along those lines, because you've got the beaches there. The houses, the buildings seem like they're kind of European influenced, certainly in the roof tiles and stuff. I, I am not 100% on this one. This is not obvious like some regions in the past have been. And obviously we've got things like the explicit deserts and the snowy mountains. And actually the lovely Mr. Solis has reminded me that there are snowy mountains in the north of Spain and Spain does have semi-arid deserts like the Tabernas Desert. So actually, yeah, I'm going to Spain here. We don't know. Uh, it turns out there are quite a lot of snowy mountains in Spain. I am rushing a little bit on this one, ladies and gentlemen. I am so excited about the news, but it does seem Spain. That's my guess. I am not 100%. It is not obvious like previous regions, but I think that's fair to say. Also, if we take a little bit of a look at this screenshot taken from the game, as well as seeing a Hop It Planter, which is amazing, you can see a map of the region there, which does seem vaguely Spain-shaped. And let's not forget that the Gala region was vaguely Great Britain-shaped. Again, wasn't perfect. So I, I think Spain, yeah. And obviously it might not just be Spain, it might be a combination of Spain and Portugal, etc. It might bring in other European countries there as well. But I think Spain makes a bit of sense. So with all of that said, we need to talk about these first partner Pokemon. They're amazing and I love them. Now the good news is we have just got the press release giving us the names of these first partner Pokemon. We've got Sprigatito? The green cat Pokemon, grass type with the overgrow ability, the capricious attention seeking cat Pokemon. Sorry, grass cat Pokemon. Gonna be honest, don't really care. Clear number three. Fuecoco is the fire croc Pokemon, fire type with the blaze ability, the laid back fire croc Pokemon that does things at its own pace. Loving this dude. And Quaxly, the duckling Pokemon. Water type, Torrent has the ability, the earnest and tidy duckling Pokemon. I can't decide. Usually when I see the style, like when I saw Gen 7, I was like, boom, Poplio. No question, nice and easy. Here, I love them. Not really Sprigatito, and I don't really know how to pronounce that. But Fue Coco and Quaxley. Oh man, they're so cool. I am loving the choices for first part of the Pokemon here. I know I'm not choosing the green cat but oh man those other two i mean I've, I've got like nine months to decide pretty much um so yeah i need to decide which of these i'm gonna pick they are awesome now there has been a, a small extra piece of information given out here so if we look at what it actually says during the press release it gives a brief description 
Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet take a new evolutionary step in the Pokemon main series. Trainers can explore an open world where various towns with no borders blend seamlessly into the wilderness. Pokemon can be seen everywhere in this wide open world, in the skies, in the sea, and on the streets. Again, I'm desperately hoping you can catch them in the cities. That would amuse me. As one of the main characters, trainers will jump into the world of Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet to begin their adventure, where they will have a different outfit depending on which game they are playing. Yet, weirdly, and I don't really understand why, but for some reason, we've got different outfits depending on which of the games you're actually playing. Seems weird to me. I have absolutely no problem with this whatsoever. This seems absolutely amazing. There were a lot of people who were very concerned that after Legends Arceus, we might be going back to a really traditional Pokemon game like Sword and Shield, and people did not want that. It seems like, and again, I don't work for Pokemon, I'm just reading between the lines here, but it seems like... What they've done is gone, hey, we're kind of halfway through making Arceus. This game is clearly the future of Pokemon. Hey, we're starting Gen 9 now. Why don't we do it more like Arceus? Because we think people are going to like this way more. And this is what I've been talking about lately. How much Gen 9 was like Arceus really depended on how, how much Pokemon recognized how much better this actually was as in how much better Arceus was, and in a shocking twist nobody could have predicted, Pokemon realized quite how much better this new style of Pokemon game was. We do not have confirmation it plays like Arceus. We do not have confirmation that we've got seamless catching like we had in Arceus, because we haven't seen any gameplay. All of the screenshots that we've seen so far, they've all actually been just, well, they've all just been kind of publicity shots, not really showing gameplay. So we do need to take a little bit of a step back and think about what's actually confirmed and not. Not everything here is confirmed. However, certainly seems like it is, ladies and gentlemen. I could not be more excited. This looks absolutely flat out over the top brilliant. I am super excited. And like I said, I was wrong. Very wrong. I told you Gen 9 wasn't being revealed. And it was. And I'm delighted. Like, people can't come at me and be like, Ha, idiot, you were wrong. Because I'm like, yeah, but look how good this new game looks. Because this is like the best consolation prize ever. I am very excited if you couldn't tell, ladies and gentlemen. So we know our first partner Pokemon, two of them are amazing. Well, and to be fair, like the grass cat seems cool, but just not in line with the other two at all. And then it seems like it's based in Spain and maybe Portugal as well. And there's different outfits depending on which game. And oh man, it looks cool. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we know. That's what we can deduce. But now it's over to you guys. How excited are you for these new games? How cool do you think they look? And of course, this is a big question. Which first partner Pokemon are you going to be choosing? Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching a very excited, but wrong, PTCG Radio.